What's going on? This is Glennon, founder of the Hustler Mindset Project. As you know, we're disruptive here, so we take guns, silver, Bitcoin, all of that stuff. If you want to make a payment for any product using one of those alternative or disruptive money gems, email Amy at Hustlers Food and we'll work it out. Today, I have something special for you. going on Marcus I know you're sitting there just chilling out maybe you just got off work popped a beer and you're thinking what the fuck am I doing with my life yeah I'm talking to you Marcus yes you you're sitting there and you just wonder and it's like God it's almost a weekend I can't wait to the weekend because Monday sucks Tuesday sucks Wednesday sucks Thursday sucks and Friday halfway sucks because it's too long you get out of there as soon as you can Marcus you leave you're out of there because every day a little piece of you dies now Marcus how did you end up here I'm going to tell you, you fell prey to this thing that we have in our society of don't work hard, work smart, work very smart. And I've really dissected that. Anything that I have been marginally successful to extremely successful doing, I've worked my ass off. And I, I have to think about that, Marcus. I have to sit back and I'm like, okay, what is it about hard work that creates such a distraction? I had to pull it apart. Marcus, I, I mean, seriously, man, I, I really had to think about this. I had to take a different look. Because the thing is, I was brought up on the tail end of the baby boomers to the generation X, Y. I'm like generation Y, but I'm a boomer. So I'm kind of like, I speak boomer and Y and G and also Z Marcus. And I thought about it. I was brought up working hard was noble. I was brought up that a good day's work was something to be proud of. Now, at the intersection of technology and life skills and lifestyles and social values, things kind of went all fucked up because working hard. And I'm going to give you some examples, Marcus. Say you are tasked to build this brick wall and the bricks are way over there. They're way yonder. As, I, as they say in Alabama, yonder, they're yonder over there. And your job is to go all the way over there and bring those bricks to the wall. And then someone else stacks the bricks to create the wall. So this you have this procession of work and you're going to get those bricks. And in the beginning, it's not that bad, but every brick it gets heavier. That 20 feet gets longer. Your back hurts, your forearms swell up because you're working hard. The problem is you're working hard in the wrong area. Many people have worked very hard in the wrong area. So here's this thing that comes out of don't work hard, work smart. But no one is saying you should work hard, but you should work hard in the right area. That's the disconnect. That's the problem, like getting an education, you'll make more money. That part's true. The disconnect, what's an education? Is it a college degree? Is this a secondary degree? Is it a vocation? Is it self-knowledge? Is it just stumbling upon something and finding out you're good? The answer is all of the above. The problem is when you say education, 
the common definition between the man and the woman on the street, Marcus, is you got the college degree. The truth of the matter is the most educated people in our society make the most money. But once again, what is education? I never stop learning. Marcus, never stop learning. When I was in the storage auction business, it was fun, made money, had a good time. But something that I missed, I learned how to do many different things. So many things. I mean, just every day I was learning something new. Oh, Lee Crochet, I believe, it's a pot. It's this enamel pot they make over yonder across the pond. And people will pay you 40 bucks for a lid. I learned that little things that go on the side of the pot for certain cookery that they don't make anymore, people pay you 40 bucks for those. I learned that a little piece of yellow metal named the Cougar Rand could be worth, at the time, 450 And today, it's worth like 1300 These are things I did not know when I jumped into the storage auction business. I didn't know that in the state of Georgia... A person can sell another person a gun in a parking lot and it's perfectly legal. You do that in New Jersey and you're caught, you're going to jail. I learned that in the storage auction business. So with education, the more you have, the better you are. However, what is education, Marcus? That's the conundrum. That's the thing that drives people to distraction because you have people right now who are working very hard. You might be one of them, Marcus. You might have to write a term paper tonight about a subject you don't give shit about that will not put any money in your pocket, but you will work hard. Your brow will sweat, you'll sweat, you might get a headache, you might get tired of reading that fucking textbook, but you're working hard. But is your hard work in the right area? 2009, I just pulled a wild hair out my ass and decided that I was going to write a book. Didn't know what I was doing. Made many errors. Had people laughing and pointing and talking all kind of smack. Some of the people who was talking the loudest smack actually tried to write books two or three years later and miserably failed. But during that period of July 15th, 2009 to October I learned so much. Book covers, Amazon F not Amazon FB, but Amazon Create Space program, which is totally different today than it was back then. You can load the book up today, get the proof today, have a book shipped to your house in two days. Kindle, same thing. Load the book in the morning, it's live on their site by lunchtime. Used to take days. So there were so many things you had to learn. How Shrivener, which is a word processing program for writers which is extremely robust, which means the learning curve is like a hockey stick. Learn, learn, learn. So from July 15th, Marcus, to October, I learned more in those few months than some people my age have learned in the last 10 years. And that's the issue. Because people are trying to work smart, but not work hard. But once you... If you don't know if your hard work is in the right area, how do you know if you're working smart? You might be thinking you're working smart and you might be working Billy Buck dumbass hard. And no, it's not going to get you what you want. You're going to be in the same place. You're going to still be mad. You're going to be despondent. You're going to be <sighs> unhappy, Marcus very very unhappy so how do we solve this conundrum of working not working hard or working smart well I'm gonna give you a few steps this is something that no one else will tell you but as a uh, fizzle who's in Saudi Arabia Uncle Glendon it all begins with you see all of this stuff about working hard working smart with little regard to your proclivities, little regard to what you want to be in life, little regard to what makes you happy, what little real regard to what makes your heart go pitter patter, you are actually working hard or attempting to work smart in someone else's program, 
that you may not even like, but because it sounds good on paper, when someone that you don't know, you don't care about, comes up to you and say, hey, Marcus, what are you doing? Well, you know, I got two jobs and I'm in school. Yay. Oh, yeah. Props are around. Marcus is great. But right now, Marcus, you got a bottle in your mouth because you're fucking despondent. You're depressed. Your dick doesn't even get hard for your girlfriend anymore because you're so fucking stressed out. She thinks it's her, but it's really you. Marcus. But you're working smart, right? You're doing everything that other people expect of you, yet you have no idea what to expect from yourself because you're working so damn smart. Now, how do we solve this? Number one, you've got to ask yourself, what do you want out of life, Marcus? Not what your mother wants for you, not what your uncle or your grandparents or the people in the neighborhood. What do you want for yourself, Marcus? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever said, hey, this is for me. This is good. This is what I want. This is what's going to make me happy. This is what's going to make me wake up in the morning and go, what up, world? This is a great day because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing things that interest me. I'm doing things that make me money. I'm doing things that... I'm proud to tell people that, hey, this is, I'm Marcus, I'm an architect, I'm Marcus, I am a scientist, I'm Marcus, I'm an entrepreneur, Mark, I'm Marcus, I'm a writer, I'm Marcus, I'm a hustler, I'm something that, because see, it doesn't matter what you do, it matters how well you do it, and how happy you are to do it, because people can sense incongruency. You're like, yeah, I'm doing all this stuff because you talk to someone and they're telling you about all this stuff, but their body's all tight and they're looking down and it's just shame all over their face because they know that they're not where they want to be. But they do it anyway because of social expectations. That's who you should be and that's what you should do and you should be damn happy because someone told you those things should make you happy, but they don't. They leave you depleted. They leave you unhappy. They leave you in a state of despondency where you're out chasing some happiness and bliss to dull a pain. So once you get what you need to do, Marcus, what you should be doing with your life, once you figure that out, and if you never thought about it, it's going to be a painful process because the first problem is where the hell do I start? And I can help you with that. You must give yourself permission to choose. Many people are waiting on permission to do whatever they want to do. And it's like, well, I I would do X and Y and Z. But I'm just kind of waiting for the right time. Translation, I'm waiting on someone to validate that decision. I'm waiting on someone to approve me. Oh, I'm waiting on someone to give me the green light. So figure that out, figure out what you want, figure out who you want to be. This is what I call creating a life of design and intent. Now, the thing is, if you don't think about these concepts or do you actually sit down and ponder your life, not your wants and whims, which is you want PlayStation or you want to watch a movie or you want to go to Cancun or no, no, those are wants and whims. What? will make you wake up every day without an alarm clock and be happy to be awake and to know that you are doing something that fulfills you. The second part, or maybe the third part, because the first part is figuring out who you want to be. The second part is giving yourself permission to go through the process. The third part is you're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to do some internal renovation because see the person that you are right now. And this is why I laugh when people's like, love me the way that I am. I'm the best I can be is usually false. It's just false because if you're the best that you can be, Marcus, 
you wouldn't be drinking that bottle right now. You wouldn't be tying it up, finding your favorite vein. You wouldn't be smoked out all the time. You would be high on life if you were the best you that you could be. You wouldn't need all of these adulterated things to dull the pain or to Jedi mind trick yourself that you're happy when you're fucking sad as shit. So you're not the best that you can be, Marcus. You're not even close. You're not even in the zip code. You're, you're, you're so far away from that. And that's why the process of figuring out who you want to be, what you want to be, is so damn daunting because you know that you're going to have to put on your backpack, get your walking stick, and go. And it's going to be a long fucking walk. It won't be easy. Now, this is the flip side because I will tell you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. People may laugh at you because when you start talking about self-improvement, edification, well, that sounds like voodoo and hocus pocus, but the people who know how to enhance increase and run that inner game they're running you they control the wall the world look it up bill gates learned how to do transcendental meditation in the boarding school prep school he was in he learned that before he got to college the inner mind the mental game is supreme because once you get your mind together your life will come together many people are crazy and don't know it because they're chasing a dream that was inoculated into their soul by someone who didn't really give a damn about them. So you're carrying someone else's dream. You're working 60 hours, going to school, denying yourself the simple pleasure of sitting at home and just chilling out and breathing because you're chasing dreams that other people gave you and told you they were tasty. And even when your own tongue tells you, that's some nasty shit you still go it's an acquired taste it's not nasty I'm just not sophisticated enough to enjoy this because it's an acquired taste no what you do is you get addicted to it so the taste doesn't matter because the high is more supreme than the taste so you're walking around with this pocket full of dreams that someone gave you working this life working these jobs you hate working around people that you can't fucking stand do you wonder why you're not happy? But see, you're working smart. You're going to school. You're working these jobs. And I do applaud you for the delayed gratification because that's a skill set that's quite worthy to have. However, what good is delayed gratification if you're dead? Strange things happening. More and more women are suffering diseases and early deaths that inherently were the domain of men because now many women are inheriting these stressors and they're taking them out when you have someone that's 130 pounds eats pretty healthily and dies from a heart attack or has one or two that is called stress and it's very stressful living in society because many people are trying to work smart but not work hard now let me tell you what's going to happen if you work hard Things are going to hurt. Things are going to hurt. Things you will, your mind is going to rebel because you are going to start thinking. You're going to start taking action. You're going to start doing this thing. And your mind is not used to that. It's like a muscle that's never been used and you do a new exercise and the muscle's like, ooh, wee. Oh, what are you doing to me, Marcus? Oh, shit. Don't do that anymore. Then a few days. The pain goes away and you find yourself more flexible, the muscle a little bit stronger. You're like, oh, OK. All right. So I see what's going on here. So you're going to go through this process and you're going to go through that process of pain because you are growing your muscles. And one thing that happens when you work hard, you build struggle muscles. There are many people who have no struggle muscles. The minute a struggle pops up and it hits them with the, not even, not even a bitch slap, not even like a Kung Fu chop. It's more like a thump. And, oh. and they, they have to frame. They're gone from a thump because they have no struggle muscles. So when you work hard, you build resistance. You build struggle muscles. So then that, that struggle comes up and it thumps you and you be like, ha, ha, ha. 
ha, ha, whatever. Then it's like, <clears throat> and you're like, what, what you got? You hit like a bitch, struggle. Next thing you know, struggle is hitting you with blows from the left, body blows and everything. And you didn't even stagger because your struggle muscles are like top shape. Then all of a sudden you start throwing blows on the struggle and they say another struggle's like oh fuck let me go find someone else to fuck with because this motherfucker's too tough then you start to find yourself not struggling that much your muscles are so strong you're like the incredible hulk it's like it may be you may be lifting a fig a city with your finger because your mu struggle muscles are so strong it feels like a feather that's the benefit of working hard that's the benefit of going through the struggle. That's the benefit of stop playing games, figuring out what you want to do, and applying yourself. That's what happens, Marcus. You become the fucking incredible Hulk, and struggle be like, I don't live here no more. So, hopefully, Marcus, you got something from this video. Hopefully, you're going to take that bottle from your lips, or put down the smack, or pa pass the blunt, and don't take it back, and begin to build yourself. Begin to be better than you were before. Hey, this is Glendon. If you're here, you probably saw the annotation, or hey, you just came to the end of the video because you know this is where the good shit is. I have a new program and it's a limited enrollment program because I'm doing something new. It's called Disruptive Money. Now, is this part of the Hustler Mindset Project? Yes, it is. But do you get the full-fledged Hustler Mindset Project? No, you don't. I've splintered this off and I'm going to do it a little different because it's text-based. But essentially, we're going to spend the next four weeks talking about money, disruptive money, how to get money, how to make money, how to save money, how to build money, nothing but money. So if you don't want the full benefit of the Hustler Mindset Project, I understand. So you'll get this and you'll always forever and forever have access to the information. So if you want to be part of Disruptive Money, class number one, you know, you know what to do. Hit that. And this kicks off March 3rd. So what I'm going to do is a pre-sale. Now, before I get to that, I really thought about some things with um, my background. If you didn't know, I lived off the grid for about 12 years. And I didn't live like in the boonies. It was kind of like I was off the grid in plain sight. And part of that was because of disruptive money. These techniques, things that I did, I want to teach you. Because I've been through a lot of shit. And, you know, at this point, I become Jewish when I said I'm never going back to the boarding house. And I figured there's other people out there like Marcus and Brad who are going through the same thing, but don't know where to start. So this is going to be a very comprehensive course. It's going to be really, really crazy because number one, and this is a lesson I had to learn myself. You must handle the money you already have before you get more. Because if you don't, you will fuck up the new money. There's no and, if, ands, and buts about it. You think, oh, I'll get more money, I'm going to be... No, 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 Consuela. Mm -mm, no. If you're fucking up the money you have today, you're going to fuck up the money you get tomorrow. If you make better use of the money you have today, you're going to make better use of the money you get tomorrow. There is no middle ground to this. I've seen too many people making way too much money. Then when that money source dries up, everything falls. I mean, just me. You making $250,000 a year, you shouldn't have a car note. But that's just me. Because you make enough money to buy 97% of the car's cash money within a few months of salary. I don't understand. But we'll talk about that and more. So if you... Sign up for the pre-sale special, which is $99.99. You'll get in for $99.99. If you wait until March 3rd, it's going to go up to probably 500 bucks. Just saying. You know how I do here in the Hustler Mindset Project. Oh, and for those of you who are still here, you see this? Uh, this is the uh, 
we'll talk about the guns because a lot of people will go, oh, you can't take guns. And those folks are just not educated. What I'm going to do, I've got myself a dealer set up. The guy's name is Mike. He's real cool. So if you want to send me a gun, let me know what you have because we're going to work all that out. And let's just talk about that. Just don't send me a gun. Say, hey, this is what I got. This is what I want to trade for. And then we'll work that out before you ship anything. Then once we work that out, I'm going to tell you how to do this. You're going to go to your gun dealer. Find one. He's going to charge you 30, 50 bucks. That's a transfer fee. Your transfer fee will be picked up on my end. I'll just include that in part of the trade. So your gun dealer is going to ship to my gun dealer. And then that's how we get it done. If you're in the state of Georgia, potentially don't do this just yet because we're still waiting for more information. You can ship rifles or long guns through the United States Postal Service, which I don't know if that's going to fly. But many people, until we get clarification, don't do that. Because I got Mike's actually checking that out. Also, for you folks who have automatic weapons, Mike put this in my ear. They'll buy anything. So if you're in Nevada, you've got some. As long as it's a transferable automatic weapon, like if it's one of those lost guns, it may not work. Uh, I'll talk to Mike about that. But if you want to send them a machine gun, we take them. And the threshold is roughly about 500 bucks for the gun. Because of the fees and stuff. So, you know, if you're sending like a hundred dollar gun. Oh, also, the transfer fee is per serial number. So if you send four guns, you're gonna have four fees on both ends. So that's just something that I have to let you know about before you just like, oh, get crazy, crazy, crazy. So that's some deals. Also, I take Mac products, Apple, Air, I mean, anything 2012 and above. I'll take that, including the iPhone. So just letting you know how this goes and you'll ship it to me and uh, whatever you take to ship it, I'll deduct that. There'll be a credit on top of your credit, so to speak. Credit on top of credit. Whoever thought such a thing would happen? So that's how that's going to go. So you have your marching orders and uh, this channel is going to change quite a bit in the future. So be prepared. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. Brad and Marcus, take care.